This is Sassasvle in Namibia and I am super excited to be here because this is my first time in Africa and it's absolutely amazing. There's just vast wide open spaces here, big skies and just wherever we go you see wild animals, there's oryx and ostriches and zebras coming up to the road. And just these incredible landscapes that are nothing like anything that I've ever seen before. And I wanted to come here to visit this place ever since I started photography. In about 2006, I bought lots of landscape photography books and there was one book by Charlie Wake where he had these incredible panoramic shots of the dunes here. And since then, I've had a kind of obsession with, with photographing dunes, with coming to this place, but because it was always out of reach, I visited places like the Sahara to photograph the dunes there, but it's really not the same. These are the biggest dunes in the world. They're about 400 meters high, and there's just a definition and a shape about the landscapes here that you can't find anywhere else in the world. It's just been a dream of mine to visit for so, so long. Now, another photographer who I've known pretty much since I started photography, Hogard Malan, has been, he lives in South Africa and he's been visiting this place for 10 years and I always knew that whenever I came to Namibia I only wanted to do it with him. So I'm here with him now and we're leading a tour together. And just some of the places that we're seeing, we're really benefiting from all of his years of photographing this place, of finding compositions and his experience of knowing how to find oryx and wild animals and, and what the wind's doing, what, how that's going to interact with the landscape. So it really is an amazing trip and it's just been filling me with this sense of awe pretty much every single time we go out. Now getting to locations like this does require a lot of driving. Now it is really beautiful, Namibia is an absolutely beautiful country, but a lot of the roads are gravel roads, dirt roads, so it's hard driving and not the kind of thing that you should be doing unless you've got quite a lot of experience of this kind of, of driving in a 4x4 vehicle. Ogar tells me that typically they get a flat tire one out of every three journeys. So it really wasn't that much of a surprise when we got a flat tire. The road absolutely decimated the tire. But Ogar and Yandre, they're completely used to this. It's something they've done a lot before. We had five spare tires across the two vehicles. So straight away they were jacking up the car, changing the tire, and we were back on the road in about 30 minutes. So apologies for all the noise that you can hear. The lodge that we're staying in is made up of lots of tents and the east wind is just blowing through and really whipping the canvas up around me. If I went and stood away from the tent then all you'd be able to hear was the wind noise. But that east wind really does bring a lot of benefits. It's quite rare. Usually the wind is westerly here, but the east wind blows up lots and lots of sand, which is quite unpleasant in many ways, but it really does make for incredible photographs. And it also quite often brings with it the rain. We've been incredibly fortunate here. Just before we arrived, it started to rain in this valley. And it very rarely rains here, very, very rarely, particularly at this time of year. And that's given us this incredible grass, which has just sprouted everywhere on the valley floor, where normally we'd have lots of gravel now we have this soft yellow and that works so well from a photographic point of view because it contrasts the orange of the dunes when you're photographing wild animals here you get to photograph them in the grass which is much nicer than photographing them against gravel so we've been incredibly lucky and it's made for some really fantastic photographic opportunities and to have these kind of conditions on my first ever visit here is just is really really nice so when it comes to photography, what you find here is lots of abstracts, incredible shapes, blocks of color, because while the dunes are very high at 300, 400 meters, they are quite distant from the road, so you can't really shoot them with a wide angle. You're basically always using a telephoto lens to pull the landscapes closer towards you and then just work with the shapes with the dune spines where you have light on one side, contrast on the other when the sun's incredibly low on the horizon, or finding these incredible trees that you get in the landscape here and using a telephoto to compress the landscape together and just give it some sense of scale but it's very rare that you're including lots of sky and lots of foreground because the foreground is just basically grass and the sky doesn't have any clouds in it there's no drama in the sky it's just blocks of blue so we often find out that we're just shooting minimal foregrounds with little bits of grass just stripes of a of a floor of foreground and then zooming in and just filling the frame with back with dunes in shadow and light or ideally combinations of both this is a typical example of the kind of compositions that work here. Now the lighting in this shot is a bit different because this is backlit looking straight into the light so there's very little contrast or saturation and I decided to lean into that by shooting a hike image focusing just on the lines of the dune and using the trees in front for context and scale. 
Now typically, like a lot of compositions here, I shot it with a telephoto lens, cutting out the sky and cutting out the foreground because they add nothing to the composition. Also in this frame, there's the lines of the backlit ripples of the dunes that are just coming through and I really wanted to bring them out because they create a certain mystery, which I also try to bring out a little bit more in processing by keeping the contrast quite low. Of course, the most popular location here is the Dead Valley. It's a clay pan amongst the dunes, which is full of these petrified camel thorn trees. Tens of thousands of years ago, a river used to run through here, but as the temperatures rose, the river started to run dry and the dunes rolled in and the roots of the trees dried out, leaving them standing here petrified for over a thousand years. It's a place I'd seen in photos so many times, but still one that takes your breath away when you first arrive after a short walk across the dunes. It really is an astonishing place. The trees make these wonderful abstract shapes against these pure blocks of color in the dunes with the white pan, and it's really easy to get lost composing them. On our first morning here, we were the first people here as only people who are staying in the lodges inside the park can leave before sunrise and the high winds blowing so much sand kept a lot of the tourists away. But it was those high winds which made for some incredible conditions throughout the morning. It's a kind of location that changes constantly with the light. So the first compositions we made were as the light moved down the dune to the west. The sky here was just a block of blue color, which adds nothing to the frame. It actually detracts from it, so it's just better to cut the sky out completely. The dead lay is a pan surrounded by dunes and there's a feeling of intimacy here. It's a hidden place that until relatively recently wasn't really discovered. So shooting wide and filling the frame with sky in an attempt to make the image feel epic, it doesn't really feel with, how, with the mood of how it feels to be here. Now I've always believed that you're not trying to capture the place, you're trying to capture how the place makes it feel in your photography. So I focused more on intimate abstracts, just the shape of the trees and the two blocks of color of the orange dune and the white pan. Compositionally, you're searching for an arrangement of trees that's pleasing. So I was trying to avoid limbs crossing and the trees getting in front of each other, trying to keep the trees and their limbs separate, and then find an arrangement that worked in the frame, like here with the taller tree in the center. As the sun got high, the shadow moved down the dune until it reached a point where the dune was completely lit and the pan was totally in shadow. And this felt for me like the optimal moment for this composition. After this, the contrast facing west was just too high, so we turned to face south where the dunes are still in shadow. This is where the wind was a blessing, as the gusts were kicking up a sand flame along the crest of the eastern dune, creating this wonderful separation between the dunes and kicking up dust along the pan. These conditions are really quite rare at this time of year, and it was just wonderful to see. We just watched and waited for the gusts of wind to blow a strong flare up and kick the dust across the pan, and then just fired the shutter while the sand got blasted in our eyes. Now I was shooting with a shutter speed as fast as possible because the high wind was shaking even a sturdy tripod. And I also wanted to freeze the sand and dust in place as much as possible with no movement blur. Compositionally, it was the same as before, just finding a pleasing arrangement of trees with good separation and making sure that the limbs of the tree did didn't cross any of the lines of shadow in the dunes. Again, I cut out the sky to keep the composition intimate, and then the only problem was selecting which frame to go with. I shot the scene with so many different variations of light and dust, but in post I've reduced it to these three images. This first one, while the scene was mostly in shadow, which had the most action in terms of dust, but for me it feels a little bit too busy. This is the last one I shot, which has the best light as, this, as the sun was higher and lighting up a little bit of the pan. And it also has a nice sand flame, but it misses the dust across the pan, which makes it feel a little bit static. And for me, was an essential part of the experience that I felt really needed to be included in the frame. So in the end, my favorite image was this one taken between the two, which has the dust dancing across the pan, but it doesn't dominate the scene in the way it did in the first image. My final composition was turning east to look directly into the light while shading the top of the lens with our hands to avoid flare and getting the trees backlit while the dunes were in a deep, deep shadow behind. I kept the composition really simple here, just focusing on two trees and when the dust blew through the scene, it created one of my favorite images from the whole trip. We returned to this place for an afternoon shoot and this time I had the place completely to ourselves as most people tend to come here for the morning. There's a special feeling about being in a place like this that feels so remote and just wandering among these trees on our own was such a wonderful experience. I felt I had so much more time just to let the place soak into me 
and wasn't in as much of a rush to find compositions as I had been in the morning. The light was completely different and so we shot mostly facing southeast which gives really clean composition as there's no grass or messy logs at the bottom of this dune. So the dividing line between the dune and the pan is really clean. Without the wind blowing through, it didn't have the same drama of the morning shoot, but it was still a lot of fun to photograph here. Again, I used a telephoto and cropped out the sky, just using the trees as abstract shapes and pushing them against the dunes, making sure the limbs were breaking lines of shadow in the dunes and playing with the contrast and shadows in the background. At the end of the day, as we walked back to the Jeep as the sun got low in the sky, I just felt this overwhelming sense of contentment, 16 years waiting to photograph this place, and every expectation had been blown away by the reality of being here. It was just a wonderful few days of photography. I think that's it for this video. I'd better get in out of the sun because I'm starting to burn. Even though it's winter here, uh, the sun does get really strong, as you can see. Now, tomorrow we're going to be heading to the Skeleton Coast, which is going to be a whole different adventure. We're going to be driving out across the dunes and camping there. I'm really, really excited about that. And I'm going to be returning to Namibia. So if you'd like to join me on a workshop in the future, just let me know. There's, you can find full details on my website, so go and check out the details there. And also, if there's any of my other workshops that you're interested in, I'm going to be going to places like Iceland, Greenland, the Dolomites. Just drop me a line and let me know. I'd love to have you along. And as ever, thanks so much for watching. Good luck with your own photography and take care. See ya.